When you think about the word physical rest, what comes to mind? Well, in God's idea, it doesn't mean to go to sleep. In today's third installment on well-being, we're going to look at what David meant by, he makes me lie down. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody. If you're happy and you know it, why don't you allow your face and your hands to show it? It is now time for the Word of God here at iChurch DMV, and I am privileged to be able to pastor the best church this side of heaven. Um, and it is so exciting um, because we are back into our in-person service. This is the second one that we do. For those that may not be familiar with the way in which we worship, um, we worship where there are three weeks where we are in our virtual only posture. Um, and then there's one week in the month where we come in person. So we invite you, if you're ever in the DMV area, to join us here in the Alexandria Marketplace, Northern Virginia, in order to worship with us in spirit and truth. We are excited because we have our local congregation um, that's in a virtual posture as well, as well as some of our local congregation that's here. And we give you greetings from my church, DMV. Well, um, my name is Alan Gray. For those that I don't have the privilege and honor of knowing in advance, of this moment and it's time for us to go into the word. There's a couple of housekeeping notes that I do want to bring you up to speed on. If you are viewing us through Facebook, then we're going to challenge you, of course, to like um, as well as to comment. Our team is monitoring um, the chat, so we want to make sure that we stay in communication and connection with you. If you're here and you're a part of our local congregation, but you're not here um, in person, then we're going to challenge you to make sure you share this service. Make sure that you reach out to some of your family and friends that you may not see either on screen um, or in person in order to ensure that they join us um, before the service is over, because there is a word from the Lord. And we want to make sure um, that you get it um, and that we share it. Um, and then if you are watching us um, via YouTube, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when your church is live. Um, with that being said, I'm ready to go into the Word of God. Let's go. Grab your Bibles, would you please hold them up in the air. We always start with our confession to put our hearts and minds on one accord. Repeat these words after me. This is my Bible, the Word of God. Today, the Word of God will transform me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn with me um, in those Bibles to Psalms 23. Familiar passage of scripture, Psalms 23. Um, I'm going to read all six verses. Um, if, if you're watching, when you're here locally, um, there's a couple of um, health screening things that we do in order to keep, make, keep and maintain um, our health while we are in person. We have a temperature check machine um, in the beginning when you first come into the doors. We also have these stickers. I have a blue sticker which represents the fact that I am fully vaccinated and I am open for hugs. Um, but you can also get a green sticker that says that you're open to just handshakes. Or you can get a yellow sticker and say you're just open to air high fives. Wherever you need to be, we're excited to be able to just be able to share that with you. We wanted to let you know that so that if you ever consider coming in, know that we've got you covered. All right, Psalms 23, here's what it says. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, for the next couple of moments, I want to continue um, in a series that we began a couple of weeks back, three to be exact, um, called Well-Being. Uh, today, in this series, we're going to deal with physical rest because we're looking at the idea, the concept of rest as resistance, rest, Sabbath rest, as the ability to cause us to resist the pullings of this world. Today, we're going to look at physical rest. But before we do, let's look to the Lord in prayer. 
Eternal God, our Father, how we love you and thank you. We ask even now that you create an opportunity for us to commune with you in spirit and in truth. That you make the atmosphere conducive where we are, where your spirit is able to go from heart to heart, house to house, person to person, community to community. Save, heal, deliver, set a captive free for your glory and our good. In Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, Amen. Now, Psalms 23, of course, is arguably the most familiar passage of Scripture. And as we continue on this journey of rest... Um, acknowledging and adhering to what God has both modeled and commanded. I wonder how many of us have missed the mandate in the words of God's favorite shepherd king, David, of course, barring Jesus. I, I have confessed in years past that it was not until I was grown that I understood verse one as it pertains to wants. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I, I, I don't know if anybody else shares this same frustration that I had growing up, Lisa. Um, but the fact of the matter is, um, I grew up in a church that favored the King James Version. And between the King's English and Iambic Pentameter, I grew up under the belief that wanting anything was displeasing to the Lord. When the truth of the matter is, a proper reading of the scripture reveals that when the Lord is allowed to be our shepherd, when, when the Lord is allowed to be our leader, the one in whom we follow, we will want for no good thing because all good things come from above, according to Scripture. As a matter of fact, in James chapter number one, verse 17, he records this. Every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Today, in this second rest installment, I believe the Spirit would draw our attention to verse number two so that we might be able to clear up for some and unearth for others where we might be misreading or potentially misbelieving the text with regards to rest. Let, let me remind you of one of our anchor statements in this series. Rest is the Lord's idea. Lord, have mercy. Rest is the Lord's idea and command. See, on the seventh day, the Lord rested, according to Genesis chapter number two. And we are commanded to remember the Sabbath day's rest to keep it holy, according to Exodus chapter 20. So when we look at Psalms 23, when the Lord is our shepherd, verse number two, he makes us to lie down <laughs> in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. So as a quick recap, there are four types of rest. There's, there's spiritual rest where we practice, where we find ourselves in the presence of God. There's physical rest where we still our bodies. There's intellectual rest where we still our minds and then there's emotional rest where we still our feelings. Last Sunday, we introduced spiritual rest as worship in which um, we highlighted its first order of importance. That unless or until we rest in the presence of God, we cannot benefit from the other rests if we go to employ them. When, when then uh, we, we went from uh, introducing rest in last Sunday to, to moving a little deeper in this past Thursday in TNT and began to unearth what scripture reveals about the kind of worship that brings us into the presence. Each of these messages you'll be able to find in our archives on our YouTube channel. But today, we begin to look at physical rest, the stilling of our bodies. We're all my alcohol, my alcoholics. <laughs> Ah, ah, ah. Well, if you're in here, we believe God. I wasn't actually trying to find the alcoholics. I was really trying to ask, where are my workaholics? That's the word I want. Somebody's got brunch on their mind. Where are all of my workaholics? 
<laughs> How about the hustlers? Let, let, let me see the hands of those who grew up believing that you had to stay busy. Or maybe you heard an idle hand is the devil's workshop and idle lips are the mouthpiece of the enemy, according to the living translation of that Proverbs text. It's this idea, it's this mantra, it's this scripture translated in this way that has allowed many to conclude that if we are not busy, we are bound to be broke and prone to be used as an instrument in the hands of the enemy. When the truth is, there's a difference from that motivation when you actually interpret the text properly. There's a more accurate translation of the text. In Proverbs uh, chapter 16, verse 27, when you read it in the ESV version, that same idle mind is the enemy. It reads this way. A worthless man plots evil, and his speech is like a scorching fire. See, the issue at hand is not about activity, but intentionality. When, when we are unintended, what comes from our actions are things that the devil can assume credit for, which, of course, results in worthlessness. Rest was God's idea. Therefore, misdefining it results in us not being well. Rest, as God intended, is never unintentional. It's not about doing nothing for nothing's sake. Rest is restorative. Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Rest is restorative. In verse 3 of Psalms 23, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If well-being is the balance or counterbalance of our soul and our body so that we might stand upright we become well first through worship, and it's our worship that then restores our relationships. Hmm. If I was to sum up the whole of the human experience through the lens of heaven in one word, Frank, it would be relationships. In, in the beginning, the crowning jewel of the creative narrative is humanity. It would be humanity that would be charged and challenged, faded and fought over in the garden. And ultimately, it's humanity that throws God's creation into chaos. It's humanity that God walks with, but wants to justifiably walk away from. But it's also humanity that keeps capturing his heart. <laughs> so much so that the love that he has for humanity caused him to do the unthinkable. To send his only son to die, to gain victory over death. And now to sit as chief defender of humanity as our intercession, intercessor. Why? Because from the beginning, God desires relationship with us. And therefore, relationship becomes the metric used by the enemy to attack us from the garden out. But it's also the metric used that God our Father rewards us from creation to this very moment using. When the Lord is our shepherd, when we worship him, when we rest in him, we are made aware of the truth. And that truth is so awe-inspiring. That truth is so awesome about who he is that there is absolutely no variation. There is nothing hidden. He says what he means and he means what he says when he says it. There's no shadow of turning in him when we worship him as he desires. Therefore, the very weight of the nature of being in authentic worship with him causes us to have to eh, lay down from the weight, to rest. Now, where we find our rest is a challenge in and of itself. Where we find our rest, 
according to the text, is strategic and important. And, 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 and it says in green pastures and besides still waters. But we'll explore that a little bit more this coming Thursday at TNT. So I'll challenge you to kind of plug in. But for the rest of today, Mom, I, I want to bring home the point that rest is restorative to right relationships. Rest is restorative to right relationships. First, with him. Then he leads us into right relationships with others for his name's sake. The intentionality of rest is to make us physically stop what we're doing. Because that's the only way that we're able to restore the balance with God and with others. All right, I got a question for you. How many of our relationships suck? <laughs> oh, y'all, y'all ain't going to tell the truth. I know y'all saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, five baptized, but just pause for a second. Get, a, get out of your church mind and just... Honestly, how many of our relationships suck because we have found ourselves busy with good intentions? (laughs) They they don't suck because we don't want to do better. They just suck because we're just so busy. For, for, For many of us, even our relationships with our own bodies are out of sorts because we have bought into... The notion that we will rest when we're dead. The greatest commandment according to Jesus identifies the summation of the entirety of the law that when you really look at it, Kevin, it's it's through the lens of rest. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. For our right relationships, both up and out, hinge on the doorway of his namesake, relating rightly with God and with others, is to bring glory to God, reinforcing the very nature that if you're not resting, you're not worshiping, and if you're not worshiping, you don't know what the truth is. So therefore, the way you're defining your relationship with God is out of sorts. And the way you're defining your relationship with others is out of sorts. So therefore, rest is restorative. The fourth commandment in Exodus chapter 20 of the 10 reminds us that Sabbath rest is the balance between activities. The intention of God's rest sits as a counterbalance between our commitment to God and our commitment to those around us. See, the first three of the big ten, God establishes a right relationship with us and him. For thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Then in the middle, right there, number four, remember the Sabbath, rest. Mm -hmm. Then five through ten, now talk about us and others. Honor your father and mother. Mm -hmm. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not lie about your neighbor. You shall not desire what your neighbor has. Mm -hmm. Right there in the middle. If you don't rest, you can't relate. Not truthfully. Not to God and truly not to others. Rest was God's idea. Without rest, it becomes impossible to maintain a well-balanced relationship, period. So how well do you rest? Let me ask it this way. What does rest look like physically? Because some of us are confusing sleep with rest. 
Some of us believe we just simply need to catch up on our sleep. Can I just tell you? There's no such thing. Once sleep is gone, it's gone. There's no amount of catching back up on something that you didn't do. That's not the kind of rest we're referring to here. We're, we're, we're pretty much at time, but, but as we prepare ourselves to close, I want to leave you with a scripture that both convicted me and in its conviction it liberated me. Because, see, sometimes we dig in too deep and it really isn't all that deep. You just need to rest yourself. That, that if you would... Just stop doing all the things you're doing. Yes. Just one day a week. It could make what you do the other six days. You gotta physically. What what does it look like? All right, let me let me give you a scripture. Isaiah 58, 13 and 14. Because again, this gave me clarity, and the clarity it gave me liberty. But it first had to convict me. Isaiah 58, 13 through 14. And this is in the message translation. Listen to Isaiah. Listen to the Lord through Isaiah to be clearer. If you watch your steps on the Sabbath and you don't use my holy day for personal advantage. If you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a celebration. If you honor it by refusing business as usual, Jesus. making money, running here and there, then you'll be free to enjoy God. Mm. Oh, I'll make you ride high and soar above it all. I'll make you feast on the inheritance of your ancestor, Jacob. Yes, God says so. <laughs> Physical rest is remembering the Sabbath by making our bodies be still. By making our bodies be still from the things that capture our attention the other six days of the week in order to be well. For it restores our relationships with God our Father and it restores right relationships with others. He makes me better when I lie down. Yeah. He makes things better when I lie down. He makes us better when I lie down. Yeah. What needs to be laid down in your life today? What needs to be laid down so you can rest. And how are you going to make it? Knowing it is one thing. Knowing it and doing it is totally different. The enemy spends all week distorting, distracting, dismantling critical relationships in our lives because he is banking on our need to be defined by the work that we do in order to prove who we are instead of resting in who God called us to be and where he called us to be and how he called us to be. We keep trying to prove who we are through the work that we do. But can I tell you something I heard a little while ago and it freed me? When you stop working, God still is working. Amen. Just because you stopped don't mean he did. How liberating is that for the workaholics? I got it out that time. Stop. Sit down. I'm, I'm done, but I just heard the Lord say this and somebody needs to hear this. 
you're not that important. Right. Ooh, my Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Yes. Right. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the idea that you can't stop for fear Ooh. that whatever you put in that dot, 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 yes. oh, well, it won't continue on, or they'll do this. Ooh. You're not, neither am I. We're not that important that we can bypass God's idea and command to rest. It could be the reason why it's not working and some of the relationships are as frayed as they are is because you keep thinking Jesus. that it Jesus. won't work if you stop working it. Mm. And I've come by here in order to tell somebody that when you stop working it, that's when you're going to find that it starts working because you're resting. One day's Sabbath rest has the ability to undo all of the working of the enemy those six days leading into it. Come on. Jesus. All the things that we struggle to get done when we know we are fighting against the prick. God will reverse the whole thing because obedience. Yeah. <laughs> is still better than sacrifice. Yeah. Sacrificing all that you do for good intentions. Mm. Right. Your obedience to God to rest in Him and because of Him to lie down and be still will allow you to see the hand of the Lord in places you keep putting your hand. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jesus. But you, Ooh. I, we have to make that happen. Physical rest is something that we have to do. The Lord isn't going to physically sit you down. He's not. Amen. You're going to have to make that happen. You're going to have to lay it down. Yeah. But know this, that when you lay it down, you're doing it for his name's sake. Mm -hmm. And he'll restore everything you lay down for him. First through him, and then through others. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we love you and thank you. We ask even now that you create an atmosphere where we presently are, where we can have a Sabbath rest, where we can physically lay ourselves down. We can lay down our burdens, lay down our worries, lay down our hopes, lay down our dreams, Lay down our aspirations, lay down our relationships, lay down our jobs, lay down our families. Everything we're carrying and all of the things we work at during the week, good and otherwise, we lay them down. We physically remove ourselves from them so that you might restore us for them. Some of us are just worn out. We've been muscling through. And just because our muscling through is 10 times better than most of the people that put intention to it, it convinces us to keep on doing it. And that's the trick of the enemy. He's causing us to compare ourselves with other people who have different giftings. And because we get a different result than they do, it convinces us that we are justified in overriding what you command. And obedience is still better than sacrifice. And the right thing done at the wrong time will still yield the wrong result. So 
teach us, God. Lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake after we have laid it down. Thank you for the privilege of giving us time and the challenge. May we live worthy of the call we have received and the command given in Isaiah 58 so that you might be glorified and our relationships with others might be well. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name and all of God's children say, amen. Can you do me a favor and put something on it right where you are? Even, even right in your home, can you put something on it and just let the Lord know that you appreciate what it is that he said to you? I'll tell you what, I'm excited um, because uh, the nuance, the energy, the spirit in the room just makes me want to keep on going. I, I, I want to actually, I wish I had written more because I'm, I'm happy to be here sharing the word. But, but sometimes you just got to rest. You just got to let it go and let God do it. So we're getting ready to go into our takeaway time. Um, but before we get into our takeaway time, we want to give everybody an opportunity to sow into whatever it is that the Lord has shared with you. If there's something that you were able to receive during our time of sharing, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to invite you. I'm going to ask you to sow into this word and this ministry specifically um, so that we might be a better and a greater use, a greater blessing uh, to the kingdom of God going forward. We are here um, because someone paid it forward. <laughs> Amen, lights. We, we, you and I uh, are only here listening to the word, impacted by his spirit, because somebody before us thought it not robbery, thought it important enough to put seed in the ground so that we might be able to feast from its fruit and be nourished in our day. Can I challenge you to be a legacy for someone else? Can, can I challenge you to sow a seed um, that will allow a future generation to hear about the kingdom of God and the saving nature of Jesus Christ? As a member of iChurch DMV, we tithe. It's just our responsibility um, according to scripture. Um, but if you're not a member, you can give. You can give something according to what the Lord has placed in your heart. I don't beg. I don't plead. I just put it out there. And if you give, and you give it from a cheerful heart, I believe scripture will still boomerang back into your life. For it said, bread cast upon the waters returns after many days. That there is a 30, 60, 100 fold return that comes back to cheerful givers. That if you give with an excitement about the fact that you are appreciative yeah. of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, what you've received and you want to pay it forward, the Lord returns it back to you in multiples. Sometimes financially, but other times in ways that you can't even explain. How many of us have ever gotten into an issue, a situation, a circumstance that you only had time enough in order to call on the name of Jesus? And when you called on the name of Jesus, that thing turned around. Amen. Amen. That's a seed sown either by you or by somebody else. There was a grandmama praying, a granddaddy that sowed or something else. You can do or be that for somebody else. So as you can see on the screen behind me as the camera follows me, on how to, to, to sow into this ministry. Um, we just pray that this has been a blessing to you so that you would do that for the next generation. Let's pray now over your seats. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you that you have given us something to give. Some of us remember that there was a time that we had a desire, but not the means. That, that we wish we could have. Jesus. But we didn't have the ability. And now that we're here, Lord have mercy, what a privilege it is to be able to sow into the atmosphere, to be able to sow into uh, the work that you're doing. So we appreciate that. Now, God, I pray that for every seed sown, you multiply for your glory and the good of the sower. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name and all of God's children. Say it. Amen. Amen. All right, now we're going into takeaway time. We're about to come off of our live feed, but our conversation um, in our live community will continue on. Our local congregation, which is in the screen before, before me, and they're going to put it up behind me, we're going to get back into um, our takeaways, our dialogue back and forth. Your comments 
Help us know where we are concerning you. Um, so that gives us the ability to make sure that we're serving you well. Um, but our dialogue um, is really intended in order to make sure that we don't just be hearers of the word, but that we actually go out and do what the word tells us to do and be doers thereof. I pray that today has been a blessing. Don't forget, this Thursday we'll be back here again um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to talk about um, what it means to rest physically, to, to find those green pastures and to find the richness of those still waters because rest is, is critically important to the well-being of the restorative nature of our relationships with God and with others. And I pray that you will join us. Be sure to share this with someone if it's been a blessing with you. Let's give our benediction for our uh, virtual and then we'll go right into our takeaways with our local. Father, we thank you. We pray that this word was as you designed it. That we say what you needed us to say. That people were able to experience what you needed them to experience. Save, heal, deliver, set a captive free. Don't allow your word to return to you void. As always, if we've said or done anything that was outside of your will, remove that so it doesn't become a stumbling block and forgive us for that. But if we are where you needed us to be, said what you needed us to say. Hide these words in our heart that they may not become an anchor of sin, but a seed of righteousness, yielding fruit for your glory and our good. In Jesus' name, amen.